Hello, you're listening to the Saluki Gamescast. This is episode 71 for Friday, February 9th, 2024. My name is Justin Young. Joining me as always are Alicia Utech, Christina Ivey, and Mario Sanders. How's everyone doing? <laughs> you do not get to start saying it's that time of the semester. I, I just then I'll just go. Eh. That's her catchphrase. <laughs> it's actually weirdly not that time of the semester for me. I think partly because the the sun is out and it's warm, and even though like oh, yeah. I hate it, but I, I hate it. I hate Carbondale for being sixty five degrees today, but also mm. like sunshine and. Serotonin. It's spring. <laughs> you take that vitamin D. It's <laughs> February. It's not spring. <laughs> I mean, I like the nice weather and all, but um, I, I certainly understand the like the weirdness of it is February and, and sixty five degrees. I'm right? wearing shorts and short sleeves again. <laughs> right. Like, uh, I mean. I was, I, we don't want to make anyone upset, but, you know, there might be some evidence to that whole climate change thing. Yeah. <laughs> it just, just it, a little. It really makes me want to go home and have a bonfire. <laughs> and for the record, I would like to say, <laughs> we went out and my family went out and we were polling people and we were looking on, and I was looking on Reddit and it is not just a my family thing. The, the... I hate white rabbits is a thing. <laughs> what? Uh, hang on. Do not use Reddit to prove <laughs> that anything is normal. <laughs> like Reddit is the like cesspool of the internet. You can prove almost anything on there. I mean, in in I hate to say that in Alicia's defense. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're that she, upset about She is it. writing prelims, and so I'm sure she's reading some really like. Uh, uh, heavy sources, and so if no, Reddit I'm... was the only other thing <laughs> she could tap into, I'm not saying it's legit, by the way. No, it, but... it is legit though, because we were we were sourcing people. It's we legit. were sourcing other people. I'm so trying to find now. There was a yeah. We're doing ethnographic. Re- we're doing snowball sampling participant. No. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't really work for this sort of. Thing. <laughs> No. All um, right. Well, we have to move on because uh, Alicia is going to be looking at her phone for hours trying to find other <laughs> nope. delusional people who hate rabbits. <laughs> Professor of, cult- of Cultural Anthropology says there's oh, a similar no. tradition um, amongst the Talton people in British Columbia around campfire smoke. <gasps> okay. What? <laughs> people breathing in heavy smoke are delusional. <laughs> Right. You proved your point. Something that none of us knew before. <laughs> All right. Um, Mario, how are you doing? I'm oh, okay. Uh, I'm this next week is going to be really busy for me. And then I'm gone for a week for a conference. So it's, uh, it's been busy, but I'm okay. All right. Well, at least, you know, like, you know, it's planned tri- travel. It's always worse when it's like last minute and you have to travel. And yeah. That was everything into a, a, a kink. Um, all right. Well, why don't we just jump straight into what you've been playing? Alicia, what have you been playing? Um, I have mostly just been playing Pokemon Go um, with doing prelims. I had to not hide my Switch, but put it out of sight. That way I wouldn't keep getting distracted by it. <laughs> Um, but also with doing prelims, I'm really trying to make sure like when I do take a break, I'm getting up and going for a walk. I'm not just sitting and scrolling YouTube, which I'm better at sometimes than other times, but I, I'm, it's been a good week for that. Cause mm-hmm. that's a lot easier when it's really cold and rainy outside. Like it was a couple of weeks back. So yeah, I mean, you can complain about the weather all you want, but like, this is a good time to have nice weather Absolutely. for you. I will say it, it's. I, I, I complain, but I take advantage, <laughs> you know, so it's been, it's been nice getting back to that right now. They're doing an event for Lunar New Year since Aww. it's the year of the dragon. They're bringing, they're having spawning dragon Pokemon a lot Aww. more frequently, which is nice. Cause that's one of the rarer spawns, obviously. I can finally get my Charmander. <laughs> Charizard isn't a dragon type. <laughs> what? 
I don't know anything about Pokemon. Don't <laughs> judge me. <laughs> Charizard is fire flying. Uh, oh, I, don't, okay. I don't know. He's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> like, Except for when you give him like a special rock and then he turns into like a dragon. Yeah, fire. when you mega oh. evolve him, he turns into a fire dragon, I think. So he is a dragon. <laughs> Only when he's holding that rock. Uh, <laughs> there's a... Aren't we all more special when we're holding the rock? <laughs> True, but I'm just saying. Oh man. Um, the other thing I've I've mostly been playing Pokemon Go, but I'm also back on like watching people play through Final Fantasy VII Remake, especially uh, the Rebirth state of play. I may have screamed and scared my cat a couple of times. <laughs> I am beyond excited for that. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're uh, super excited. Look, you give you give me Cisne and I will cry. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> you give me Rufus Shinra and prom- and show me that we get back the mini game of Rufus's welcome march, and I will be happy. <laughs> Writing this down. Give me and I will cry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this seems like you're just really opening yourself up for, like, emotional (laughs) manipulation. (laughs) Look, we've already established that in my world, Rufus Shinra is Regina George. If if Rufus Shinra punched me in the face, it would be awesome. So, (laughs) no. (laughs) That's that's dark. Don't go down that. Oh, man. Oh, man. We here at the Slickly Games cast do not endorse any abuse of any sort. I mean, no, no, no. Mm-mm. Not gonna, that's a different podcast. <laughs> Never mind. Um, oh, all right. Um, that everything, Alicia? That's really been it. Yeah, I'm mostly focused on writing. All right. Um, how's the writing going? Um, I, It's definitely been slower than I wanted it to be, but I... I was really stuck on one particular aspect of one of my questions, but then I chatted with my advisor on Wednesday and he was like, oh yeah, just like, remember this part that you found that you researched was actually a side part to the original thing. So like Mm -hmm. that's, that just fits in under this subcategory, this sub point that you're looking at and trying to fill in. And I was like, Mm. oh, you're right. Mm. Is Craig or Johnny your advisor? It's Johnny. Okay. I kind of remember. Yeah, Craig is on my committee still. Is but. Craig your advisor, Mario? Okay. Uh-huh. I, I can't keep who. No. <laughs> who is who. You mean you don't know every aspect of our <laughs> academic lives? How dare you? <laughs> hey, like, I'll, I'll say this very upfront. Like, I don't. And then somebody's, like, really offended sometimes. But, like, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, what do you mean you don't know what I'm doing my dissertation on? And I'm like, why would I know? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're on someone's committee, why would you know? Honestly, yeah. Do you think they send out a memo to all of us? (laughs) This is how Alicia's, like, is progressing? Like, no, that never goes on. (laughs) Um, So, anyway, it's not that I don't care. It's just I don't know. So. Oh, no. When I say say how dare you, I'm... I know. I know you're joking. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking about other people. (laughs) Um. All right. Um, so, Christina, what have you been playing? So, I have two that I've uh, been like watching and playing a little bit. One is a Dead by Daylight uh, has, I think, canceled their Lunar New Year event because, and they they've had one since the very beginning, so it's actually quite sad. But they came out with a new gameplay mode called Lights Out, which. You play DBD normally, but you don't have the perks, the killer's heartbeat, which you can normally hear uh, to like warn you that they're coming, uh, has been deactivated. The The whole reason it's called Lights Out is because the circumference around you is small, so you can't see like if the killer is coming towards you. Um, so is this in reference to the horror film? Isn't that what uh, it I mean, it didn't... There's no direct reference. I think it's just kind of a... Um, a coincidence that it's called lights out but i mean it would it if they didn't they should have capitalized on it that would make sense um and it it definitely has added kind of the horror element back to the game because honestly if you've played dbd the first couple of 
playthroughs, you're like, oh, like I remember I played against Myers my very first game and I may have peed a little. Um, <laughs> like it was so <laughs> frightening. But um, like once you get to playing it, it becomes more about mechanics and it's not as scary. This sure. though, like the, especially if you play one of the stealth killers, they can come up behind you and like ghost face, you can't, won't even realize and he'll just be there. Um, it seems to be like mixed in the community. There's some p folks who are like, yeah, but behavior's trying. Let's give this more of a chance. And there's some people who are so angry that they have focused on this as opposed to, I don't know, uh, improving some other things or making a Lunar New Year kind of thing. Um, I I think it I think it's it's fun, but I also like bringing that horror element back to it. Like I don't know, there's something about that. That would seem like the big appeal to that game to me was like, how can you make it scary? How can mm -hmm. you keep it being scary? Because that was one of the things. Like I haven't played Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I played um, Friday the a, a, 13th. Yeah, yeah, a fair amount of that. And that game, like, is scary, like, the first maybe couple hours that mm -hmm. you're playing it. Yeah. And then it's never scary again. I think that's part of the reason why F DVD made it and Friday the 13th didn't, because the mechanics of DVD, like, it switches from becoming scary to um, strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a, that's why they've, like, they're starting to transition and there's a lot more comps and things like that is because there's a lot of strategy and gameplay gameplay to it. Um, this eradicates a lot of that because again, you don't have the perks um, to kind of build in your strategy. Uh, it takes away, there's some aura reading stuff still left that you can see through the fog, but ultimately a lot of the, the strategy just kind of gets turned on its head basically, which I, I also think may be another reason why folks don't like it is because they can't be sweaty. <laughs> like they can't, they can't be too try hard with it, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other game that I've been kind of watching playing is project 13, which is, uh, more from an indie developer. Um, it's a kind of like an observational duty type game, which if you're unfamiliar with essentially observational duty games are like, you have been hired. You don't like the whole reason why you've been hired remains a secret, but to watch, um, camera footage of these different places and you have to like pick out anomalies. So like sometimes they're real simple, like something will go missing on the desk and you have to report it. Sometimes it's as big as like there are now uh, people there that are not supposed to be there and they're spooky and weird. And like, it's a lot of, um, what's that word where it doesn't look quite human? The no, uncanny. The, yes, yes. Yeah, uncanny uncanny valley. valley type stuff. Um, this one, Project 13 is different because you, instead of like looking at a camera, you're walking through a hallway. And you have to be, it's like, have to be observational about the stuff that's around you. And it's in a uh, mental health, f like, ward of a hospital, which, of course, unfortunately, they, like, capitalize on how people think mental health is creepy. But, um, so it's, but it's, like, you go through and, like, different things pop up and are different. And once you reach the end of the hallway, it starts all over. And the goal is that you're trying to get through the hallway 13 times and notice what is wrong sometimes nothing is wrong sometimes the what is wrong is incredibly obvious yeah. so is it always the same thing on your first time through or is that randomized um yes the, so the it starts at level zero and like it'll tell you right before you start to go in what it is at level zero that is how it's supposed to be okay. and then starting from there either again it can be normal or there could be like one is this woman who's staring out the window in a wheelchair. She has a bird next to her. And in one of them, she's like picking up the bird like she's going to eat it. It's like weird. They're not right. all that gross. That's just the first one I thought of. But, um, but that's all randomized. Yes. So like that might happen on your second time through uh -huh. one time. And the next time it's on your seventh time th uh -huh. down the hallway. Uh -huh. And sometimes okay. they don't repeat. Um, like that, like that might be the one time you see it. And so you don't have to think about it anymore, but sometimes it's there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just a really interesting game. Um, it does have some spook element to it, uh, which I, again, tend to like in games. Um, but yeah, it, the way that it's changing that observational duty formula is also what kind of, uh, drew me to it. That's, that's really interesting. Cause I mean, it's kind of a weird type of game, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit into any like traditional genre really right right i mean I, I suppose it's playing off those like mobile hidden object games to yep. some yeah. degree yep like um but that's interesting mm -hmm. 
Um, all right. Anything else? Uh, no, nope, that's it. All right. Mario? Yeah. Uh, this past week, the two things I've really played um, were part-time UFO on the Switch, which was, a, I think, originally an Android iOS game that they ported. Um, it's from the HAL laboratory, so it's from the Kirby people. Um, you play as a little UFO, and you pick up objects, and you have to sort of, like, craft whatever it is they're asking you to put together, like, sort of put it all in whatever it is that there is there. So, like, one of them is an ocean. So there's, like, five different levels, and there are three iterations of each one. So, like, at the ocean, one of them is, like, just catching a bunch of different fish. One of them is, like, transporting objects from one boat to another boat. Um, one of them is a diner level, so you're, like, picking up on off of, like, a conveyor belt different items and, like, building a salad or a parfait or stuff like that. Um, it's a cute little game. It's maybe two hours, two and a half hours. It's, like, it was just on sale. I think I got it on the eShop for, like, seven bucks, but mm -hmm. I think normally it's no more than ten. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a cute little game. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the other one is Rising Zan, Samurai Gunman, which is a old PlayStation 1 game that uh, <clears throat> I had, when I put together a list of games for friends to play over, you know, one of those little events, that was one of them, and I didn't get around to it then, so just going back to it. Rising Zan? Samurai Gunman. <laughs> that is an okay. incredible title. Right? The intro song is so good. <gasps> yeah? Yeah. I love so I know Afro Samurai, mm -hmm. because that's the one that Samuel Jackson, like, does the voice for. Yes. But, like, I don't I don't think I know this game at all, so I'm really interested. What I mean, what kind of gameplay is this? It's a sort of action adventure and, you know, precursor to like a devil may cry okay. type of gameplay like um, third person yep. hack and slash sort of yeah sort of um you play as a old western cowboy type of guy <laughs> whose town gets taken over and he is taken in where he learns <laughs> the art of samurai <laughs> stuff and so y your weapons are basically both a katana and a revolver. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you fight enemies along the way. That sounds That's really cool. That <laughs> sounds amazing. It's pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. Um, I will say it definitely has some original PlayStation jank. Uh, the, <laughs> the camera is really unwieldy. Um but uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun time. It's one that you know, if uh, I don't know where if it will really ever become available again. I don't even the company that made it is like Age Tech A G E T E C. I don't know if that's one that you all have heard of before. So I don't know if that's one if it's a game that will like ever get remade or ported or anything like that. But uh, you know, it, it's it's worth a an emulation. It's also not that long. I think it was like maybe four hours, so. It sounds like the type of game that if you started asking around, nobody would know who owned the rights to it now. Sure, yeah. Like, that happens with a whole lot of games, like, remarkably way more than people realize. And, um, like, Windjammers, like, the story behind Windjammers mm. was always nobody could figure out who had the rights, and then they traced it to an insurance company in uh, Michigan what? had the rights or something to that game at All one right. point. Um, and so, yeah, it's probably like that company and whoever acquired that company has been gobbled up, you know, three or four times mm -hmm. over in the intervening years. That would be uh, interesting to just dig into and figure out like who owns the rights to that game at this point. Cause yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's a fun game. A lot of it is, um, yeah, you definitely like traverse through, you know, the the level and do some like fighting of enemies, but it feels more like a lot of them are you're fighting this one this one person at a time, you know, in that same, you know, sort of uh traditional what we might think of like that samurai style where you're not fighting 
numerous enemies at, at once. But uh, um, yeah, the final boss is not a ton of fun. It's like, you know, <laughs> classic 17 phase final boss. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. And, you know, you die and you go all the way back to the beginning. That's a, it's oh. an embellishment. But uh, um, yeah, like I said, it's a it's a fun game and it's not super long. So um, and you can you'll if you play just through there's like 10 levels. If you were to play through the first three or four, you'd, you'd get an idea of what the rest of the game is going to be like. But yeah, it's a good time. I will have to look that up. I'm always interested in those like weird little gems. I mean, in a lot of cases, like this game's actually pretty fun. It's just, you never would have picked this up off the shelf, you know, 30 years ago. It genuinely like 25 years ago, I didn't have an original PlayStation, so I'm not super familiar with like the, like, I, I know what like the big hits on the console sure. were, but yeah, this one feels like, it wasn't put out by a big company, so it didn't have like the recognition. But if it if it did, I feel like this is one that people would talk about. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, that it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I played a little game called Sheepy. Um, the uh, please tell me that's as adorable as it sounds. Um, sort of. <laughs> Sheepy, a short adventure. So Sheepy is uh, actually available for free on Steam. So a group of people made this game, I'm guessing, just by the way they're marketing it and putting it free on Steam and everything, this is probably to try to get some recognition so that they might get hired to develop something else, like as a showcase piece. Uh, but I don't really know uh, what the motivation for it is. Um Sheepy begins by you are um, you are some sort of spirit that comes down, and there is an old uh, sheep plush animal that's lying in trash, and the spirit goes inside of it, and you take control. It is a two D uh, side scroller platformer. Um, I would say it is definitely borrowing heavily from Celeste um, in some of the gameplay. It's, it never gets quite as complicated or challenging as Celeste does, but it's also incredibly short. So when it says it's a short adventure, I finished it in less than an hour, and that was with me going in, over into the office and talking to Laura for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think you could probably beat this game in you know 30 to 45 minutes easy. Um, so it's pretty short, but it is incredibly well made, um, and quite a bit of fun. And so as you go along, you're gaining new abilities. Um, there's a hint of a little Metroidvania in that, mm -hmm. but like, you're not really going too far off the beaten path. There are some collectibles you can get if you go a bit off the beaten path. Um, but it, like Celeste, it like adds these abilities one on top of another. So you get like a, a roll and dash ability, and then you get an ability where you can kind of become a spirit and fly around for a short period of time. And, um, and so you, those like get used a bit at a time, and then you're having to chain them together. Um, there aren't particularly enemies except for one boss that you uh, have to fight, which is an evil teddy bear. <laughs> that's what i was looking at pictures that's why i'm like showing alicia and it's in the back of it like the big shadow over it <laughs> yeah um so uh, there is a there is a story to it um so you're as you're going through the game you're um sort of finding notes um and all the people are sort of deceased and you're finding notes next to them you know that sort of um environmental storytelling it's not it's not perfect but like they are at least trying to do something kind of interesting with it i don't know that the end of the game makes a lot of logical sense but it, it sort of does pay off in a very kind of fun and exciting way and when you get to that end you're actually um i think very well rewarded for having played you know the short amount of time that it is uh, it does some kind of fun things with the story, even if it doesn't, even if then you're going to go, I don't know what all that meant, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so like, it's neat, you know, it, it's cool to see people 
obviously whether how much you like get Celeste out of this, they were obviously inspired by that game quite a bit. And so it's neat to see a generation coming up who played that game and want to make games more like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think this plays quite as well as Celeste, obviously, but like Celeste is one of those all time, like great platformers. So I don't expect (laughs) much of anything to play that well. Uh, but it's still quite a bit of fun. It's obviously free. Uh, so I would say check it out. That sheepy, uh, a short adventure. Um, and it's available on steam. I don't know if it's available anywhere else, but you know, most people have access to steam. So for free, entirely worth it. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for what we've been playing. Let's go ahead and move on to news. Um, I feel like there's quite a bit of news this week, uh, but like major bombshell stories, but like not necessarily uh, a whole breadth of news. So we may talk about some of these uh, a bit more in depth. Um, let's start off. Disney is investing $1.5 billion in Epic Games. Uh, that's the makers of Fortnite and the Unreal Engine. Uh, they're going to build a new universe that con- is connected to Fortnite. So they showed off a short little trailer. It's not entirely clear what they're doing. It sounds like what they're trying to do is build an online uh, game world for just Disney properties that um, will in some way connect to Fortnite. So like maybe the items that you get and the costumes and the characters, you'd then be able to take over into Fortnite. Though I'd say that's a little unclear because does Disney really want Disney characters yeah. running around with guns <laughs> in it, Fortnite? Um, it feels like they're just bringing to life the Wreck-It Ralph 2 movie, which wasn't a great movie. No, it's not. <laughs> that movie's incredibly disappointing after like, the first uh, one. Yeah, it was a, the second movie was, it was a terrible movie. So, like, uh, like, just... That's the vibe that I'm getting is like remembering when they go onto the internet in that movie and being like, is that what you're doing right now, Disney? Do you, do you realize that that was a bad movie? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best part of that entire movie and what that movie should have been instead was when they had all the princesses together. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and like, they should have just made that. Movie. <laughs> like, um, yeah. that was the most like interesting thing they did in that entire movie. Um, but yeah, it, it's weird. Cause I mean, the $1.5 billion investment, obviously Epic Games is making quite a bit of money, but I think one of the things to also consider with that is um, the Unreal Engine is being used more and more for filmmaking. Mm-hmm. So like the uh, the volume uh, set where they have uh, an almost 360 degree um, um, projector wall around the actors, like they're using that in a lot of the Star Wars TV shows and everything so that they can project backgrounds in real time as the actors are moving around and everything. They call it the volume. Um, so, you know, when you, when you see that Disney's investing that much money, that's not necessarily just into the development of this game, that they're taking an equity stake in uh, Epic. So, um, you know, that gives them like, some control over like where is that development going to go for technologies like the volume going forward. Um, That makes more sense to me. Yeah. I I don't know. Do you all want an online persistent game world of Disney? I mean, I I feel like we had that. We had like a preview of that with Disney dreamlight Valley and like that fizzled fizzled out pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I actually don't know if that fizzled out or not. I feel like that's the sort of thing we're going to hear in a year that they're they're making $100 million a week off of that game. (laughs) And none of us are playing it, but somebody is. It it fizzled out a lot of the communities that I'm part of, but you're right, it might be still big for other people. It's certainly something we don't hear much about anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean... This, some people have been comparing this to like Disney Infinity, which was their oh, Toys yeah. to Life um, effort. And so are we just getting a version 2.0 of that and it's going to be that, except you're not buying toys anymore? Mm. 
and said you're paying fifteen dollars to have Stitch. <laughs> that we uh, give an assault rifle to and then turn <laughs> loose on Fortnite. I mean, in fairness, Stitch did have a gun to oh, begin so. with. So. Stitch is one of the characters that I that would make sense for that, honestly. <laughs> I mean whether Stitch should have a gun is a whole other debate we can yeah. have. I mean, but. I can't say anything. My Fortnite character is a cat in a robot suit. <laughs> it's like I love it. <laughs> I mean, so now it can be one of the Aristocats. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> a lady doesn't boat. start fights, but she does finish yeah. them. <laughs> Get Marie in there. Yeah, that's exactly who I thought of, actually. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this is interesting. Like, you know, Disney has, um, on more than one occasion, sort of exited the game industry only to return mm-hmm. and... After they shut down their studios, they returned by, okay, we're just going to license out all of our properties. This obviously is them doing that again to some extent. Um, You know, it doesn't seem like they're abandoning all that other development. They're still going to be making outside Star Wars games and, you know, Marvel games and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think the the other thing that I think is potentially interesting, and I obviously Square adds a whole extra wrinkle to it but epic i believe is the only storefront that has the pc versions of the kingdom hearts games Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so thinking about you know there's already some relationship there between disney and and epic and so how if that will sort of play into it if they're you know but like i said i know square is another sort of monster to have to deal with I was actually just thinking of Kingdom Hearts, like not counting the Star Wars games because I wasn't. I forget that Star Wars is Disney because uh, I'm not a Star Wars fan either. Don't judge me. Um, but it's like almost they keep going in and out because they're trying to recapture that like Kingdom Hearts magic that uh, they had for a while. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it would make sense for them to try and recreate Kingdom Hearts with a story that actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I won't uh, I won't lady defend Beyond Horizon, but I will lady defend Kingdom Hearts. No, I'm just kidding. It, was, it, was, uh, it did you, not make sense. Yeah, I, you can't defend that, that, <laughs> that storyline. I, I, no, I don't have anything against the games. I've played a number <laughs> of them. I think they're enjoyable. I'd like to play the ones I haven't played, mm-hmm. but that's... But, uh, that's a storyline beyond. But my emo self got to be in Halloween Town. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will defend the I will defend the first two games. Beyond that, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but I think, you know, I think yeah. to Mario's point, like part of the disappointment of Kingdom Hearts for some fans is that it became so all engrossing to mm. be involved in that series. Yeah, that unless you were the most diehard. Mm. Right, yeah. it it almost was antagonistic to players mm, to some yeah, degree. Yeah. I mean, like I have to go buy, you know, Kingdom Hearts one point five final complete <laughs> mix, <laughs> and then two point eight like half finished <laughs> complete mix, and like it is so complicated. Like even okay. if you want it to right now, and we've talked about this before, go out and play the entire Kingdom Hearts series, knowing what that even means. And, like, yep. what is the way to do that is so convoluted at this point. I do think they have the, have it all on one complete disc now. Like, it's all on one I don't, thing. I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> maybe, th- maybe three isn't included on it, but I do believe that they did a I combo think, pack of 1.5, 2.5, so and 2.8. I think, I, think I, I thought it was the 2.8 final mix. I, we're proving Justin's point right now, but no, like I said, there were at least so there was one point five and two point five on the yeah. PS3, and then they then did a one point five two point five combo on the PS4, and then, and then was then it two point eight was on 8. the PS4? Yeah, and then obviously there was Kingdom three. Hearts three, but okay. then there's like a I get it. There's like a disc that's like a the story so far. Yeah, it, I think that, you're right. I don't think that includes three, and I don't think that includes the rhythm game, <laughs> Melody of Memory, or something yeah. like that. So you're proving my point. <laughs> and uh, like I don't even. It also doesn't include the Nokia phone game. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even say that as you know. Anytime you criticize something, people are like get very defensive. I have no problem with Kingdom Hearts. Go play it all day if you want. My issue is, as somebody who would like to like be able to follow that series, I, mm-hmm. it's been so antagonistic 
two oh, people absolutely. who, who weren't yeah. really into it. For sure. So I see the value in, from Disney's perspective. What if we could recreate that and make it in a much more accessible manner? Mm-hmm. Right? Um, well, and especially with... I, rem- uh, I I haven't heard anything since that first trailer drop, but, you know, they... Last year, the year before, they did drop a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4. And it was, was at like, least 2021. Yeah, it was a minute ago. Yeah. But like with that, they were like, we're moving away from the Disney worlds entirely. Which is insane. Isn't the part of it. It's like how convoluted the story got. Like the, the, the very beginning of one, okay, yeah, there's this darkness that's coming. But then it just like kept trying to... It was like, like I love... I love Dragon Ball Z, but it was really frustrating towards the end when it was like they kept having to like level up because each person they defeated was the most powerful being in the universe. (laughs) Oh, wait, until we have to like... You mean it's Buffy? Uh, Yeah, (laughs) You mean it's supernatural? Exactly. It's it's frustrating when when that has to... when when that is the thing. And it felt like it kept having to to one-up itself after a certain point when... The first one was so enjoyable because it was like, oh, we're going to battle the Disney villain. I also am a Disney villain fan. So the fact that I had to kill Ursula made me very sad. Um, <laughs> I did it, though. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but then in Kingdom Hearts 2, you got a new Ursula song. Okay, but like, <laughs> the old one was good. Where you know? Anyway, anyway, uh, it just, yeah, it felt like that. They made the story too convoluted because they were trying to capitalize on the idea so why not scrap the idea start with a new foundation and and just start a new franchise yeah and like i said if you can get out from a relationship with square which i mean Mm -hmm. they've made obviously great games yeah you know historic franchise but we know that that they're not always the easiest to work with in terms of you know getting those properties so it's also you're you're working with Square. Square is halfway around the world, mm-hmm. whereas um, Epic is in North Carolina, mm-hmm. I think. Um, so you know, just a hopscotch up from Orlando. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I I see even that being a little easier. Mm-hmm. You're not having the cultural like chasm there that I think sometimes um, historically has been difficult with American companies working with Japanese companies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they go with this because um, I, I, there is such a demand for Disney stuff. One of the things that they note in here is what if it's one place where you could play and explore and shop? And I'm like, <laughs> shop? Like, are you, are you going to be <laughs> selling me, like, Disney T-shirts? Like, <laughs> not virtual ones, but, like, real ones I can order? And because I just don't think that's going to work. No. But if they're talking about selling me clothes for my character, like if I can have Stitch in a Stitch t shirt <laughs> with an assault rifle, <laughs> with an assault rifle, like I mean, th- there you go. <laughs> not, not a plasma gun, an actual I, assault uh, rifle. If we're putting him in Fortnite. <laughs> I don't know the fort. I mean, mm. <laughs> the Fortnite guns or like weapons sometimes look like they were they came from space. <laughs> I, I think that's very purposeful, right? Uh-huh, like, for sure. They don't want it to look too serious. But like this is supposed to be the kid shoot 'em game. <laughs> yeah. This is killing for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's we'll soften it a little bit. It's like all the '80s cartoons. The bad guys shoot. Red be- beams, the good guys shoot blue beams. <laughs> well, that was like, I mean, it's those kinds of games make sense. Like when Animal Crossing came out, I was like, oh, so this is capitalism for babies. <laughs> That's essentially what it does. It teaches you capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Tom Nook is a ruthless capitalist. Dude, he yep. is. <laughs> Teach kids that landlords are good uh-huh. from an early age. Yep. Um, all right. Um, some good news for Nintendo. The Switch is now officially the best selling console of all time in Japan, as it has reached 139 million uh, units worldwide. It is 19 million from the worldwide lead behind the DS, Nintendo DS, mm. and the PlayStation 2. Mm. Dang. So, um, it, it's getting to a point where maybe. It, there's some doubt if it will actually reach that number or not, but regardless if it reaches it, because obviously we expect to switch to this year, mm-hmm. um, 
you know, the other thing to consider is that the PlayStation 2 got to its position by selling for $99. Yep. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the lifespan of that system, they were selling a version for $99. And Nintendo has never dropped the price of the Switch. It's still $300 to go buy a Switch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's not exactly... I, f- I feel like with Nintendo's track record, even when the Switch 2 comes out, it'll be... 250 or 200 for a, a switch gen one. <laughs> oh, I mean, I sort of think they might not still drop the price. I, yeah. I mean, I'm expecting the switch two not, to come yeah. in at 400 at yeah. least. Mm-hmm. That, that could be it too. And so, I, I mean, maybe what they do is they just get rid of the old version of the switch and they take the OLED and drop it down to 300. And that's how they have two tiers there. Mm. And so if, you know, like, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they are able to do that. Um, as part of that, uh, their quarterly earnings report, they also announced the sales for some of their software. Um, so there's some new games mixed in here, but I'm also going to read their top three all time mm-hmm. for the Switch, which is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 60 million copies. <laughs> 60 million. Is, is this digital and physical? Do we know? Um, yes, I believe it is because this is coming from Nintendo directly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when it comes from outside sources, like then in- it's only physical. Yeah. But um, Animal Crossing: New Horizons <laughs> at forty-four million. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate at thirty-three million. Um, and then these are the games. They're big titles that they released last year. Um, Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom at twenty million. So in less than a year's time. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is already like two thirds of the way to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, mm-hmm. um, which just tells you like how insanely well that game had sold last year. Yeah. Um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder is at twelve million, Pikmin Four is at three million, and Super Mario RPG is at three million, which is notable because it has outsold the original Super Nintendo release of that game. Dang. So if you're wondering if it was worth Nintendo's effort to remake that game, um, uh, apparently yes. <laughs> <laughs> it just blows my mind looking at this, like that they're top three, and I, and I think I, I've I think I've said this before, but like Mario Kart Eight Deluxe at sixty, the next closest is sixteen million below that. So like combine the sales of Super Mario Wonder and Pikmin 4 and you're still not making up the difference <laughs> between I, those. I think though like some of the draw of Nintendo is that they can appear more accessible than other consoles at least or like more family oriented, right? And to me the quintessential like family game is is Mario Kart like cuz you mm. could not know much about that game and and play it with the rest of your family, mm-hmm. you know. Sure. Um, so honestly, it makes sense. Also, it didn't um, like did wasn't there con- wasn't there switches that came with that? Yeah, it, it's yeah. been the yeah. packing game for yeah, yeah. Sev- every Christmas basically. Yeah, it's the packing game, and there's constant DLC. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, it really feels like they've kind of cornered the market in that mm-hmm. aspect because I just think about like what is the last big PlayStation game that was like family or kid friendly. Yeah. Boy. (laughs) I was going to say like Guitar Hero Rock Band era. Yeah. 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 I mean, and those are like specifically family games. I even just think about like, what are the the big games that have come out over recent years? I would say that even, even those ones were 15 plus years ago now. (laughs) Yeah. And so I just think about like, it feels like PlayStation is very much like a, we're not making games for, Mm -hmm. Like, our, our adventure games are not going to be meant for, like, a, a kid. I mean, like, yeah. do kids probably play God of War? Yeah, probably. But, like, that's not the, like, That's not who target. they're targeting. That's not their target demographic. They'll accept it. But that that's just, like, the way that I see it. I think that's why the next, you know, Nintendo console is probably going to sell just as well. Because if you have kids... I f- it feels like the easiest purchase because you know that they're yeah. gonna there's going to be games that come out for it, mm-hmm. or even if you're a teenager with a job and you want sure, your parents sure. to play along, um, like it's that it's that accessibility on both ends. Yeah, yeah. Every parent I know with younger kids has a switch in their home. Yep. 
And the thing that is often kind of interesting is that the parents are often playing those games mm-hmm. with their kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would say at a much higher rate than they're playing the, um, the Xbox or the yeah. PlayStation mm-hmm. with their kids. Um, so, you know, I, I have a friend and she was telling me that her kids, you know, um, play the Switch, but then she went and bought like some of the sort of like cozy farming games mm-hmm. for yeah. herself. Because yeah. she's not super into gaming, but she was like, well, I used to like it, and these games seem accessible and mm-hmm. things I would play. Um, so I think that's what becomes interesting because the Switch has had so many of these like indie and cozy type games mm-hmm. that they are pulling in that demographic that may have quit gaming mm-hmm. years ago. But like that system setting there is the system that's accessible. Mm-hmm. Those aren't the type of people who are going to have a $2,000 gaming computer. Yeah. Well, uh, in yeah, the home. yeah, and I feel like that makes sense for, I mean, adults in general, but parents where, like, I don't need a ton of commitment to play yeah. Stardew Valley. Like, I right. could play that yeah. for a couple hours right. or an hour, you yeah. know, after putting kids to bed or I'm off mm-hmm. of work and, you know, chilling before going to bed. I can play that for an hour and feel like, okay, I actually did something. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, booting up some, like, big narrative-heavy thing, playing it mm-hmm. for an hour feels like, I mean, did you make progress? Yeah, probably, but... You know, it, it's those the I always feel like those games require a lot more commitment For sure. yeah. than that also makes yeah. me think like so number two is Animal Crossing. And even though it's a big gap between that and Mario Kart. I was thinking they have the pandemic to thank for those sure. numbers because yeah. yeah, absolutely. That was the like you we couldn't do anything. Like that was something that got uh my my ex and I up was oh we have to <laughs> we have to be up by six so we can catch this <laughs> this <laughs> insect on whatever or we have to make sure to, to 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 go get our ticket so that we can catch the special fish, right? <laughs> when, People yeah. forget that that game came out in March when lockdown yep. started. Yep. Yeah. I remember like we yeah. I want to say that Mario and I like watched the the video for it and oh, we yeah. both were like, "Eh, I own that." Like <laughs> it became a big part of my life because of that. Yeah, I know. I mean, last week we talked about Among Us as like the game of the mm-hmm. pandemic. I feel like Animal it would be Animal Crossing and Among Us. Like yes. if you were yeah. to say, yeah. "What were the two games that were like the biggest or like that like would describe that period of time mm. i would say it's those two for sure yeah but the thing i think that's particularly interesting about that now that it's kind of crossed cross that threshold like the animal crossing games were always you know oh, fairly sure. popular yeah. but now that's crossed that threshold into a whole nother level when they put out a switch Two, if that's at all successful and they will release a new animal crossing mm-hmm. game for yeah. it yeah all those people who have fond memories of playing it during the pandemic are going to go we should pick that up. Yep. Yep. Like we should, you know, let's play some more of that. Like it's, it's been enough time. I don't think there are too many people still playing it every day. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it it's one of those things where I wouldn't be surprised if Animal Cross, you thinking about that threshold, or maybe that's the threshold you're talking about, where Animal Crossing will sell consoles. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Like Absolutely. The same way that like Zelda would sell consoles, the same way that like Mario Odyssey would sell consoles a new Animal Crossing will sell consoles. I'm thinking of like... My stepsister will absolutely... It doesn't matter. She will buy it because... (laughs) And she might only play Animal Crossing. (laughs) But like that will... Yeah, absolutely. What I was thinking of when Justin, when you were talking about earlier about the folks that, you know, were playing it along with their kids, I was like a demographic that Nintendo hits on with this that I don't know of any other game console that would is like the cozy mommy, <laughs> you know, demographic, yeah. which again, there's nothing, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. But like, uh, yeah, the one that they can kind of, it's their day off. They're going to sit there with a hot cup of tea and, and sink themselves into their Island. <laughs> they need to rebuild it and plant the flowers and all of that. <laughs> well, we talk about it a, a lot on here over the years that, you know, traditionally it's been, Girls grow up playing video games and then they get to that middle school age or into early high school and they kind of abandon it. And then they come back at some point later and games have had so changed, right? So I'm thinking particularly of my generation, like Mm -hmm. my friends, my sister, and they came back at some point and now all of a sudden, you know, there's two joysticks and there's like (laughs) 20 buttons on the controller and they were completely lost, right? Mm -hmm. 
And Nintendo got a lot of those people back with the Wii. Yes. Because mm-hmm. uh, the Wii was so easy for people to pick up and play. And there was a desire from a lot of those women, now adults, to play video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That doesn't happen quite the same. I, I Talking to my students, many, many more of the women now um, just keep playing video games. Yeah. They, yep. they don't ever kind of abandon it. But I think it is. It's it's the it's the Street Fighter experience, you know? Like, if, if you stopped playing Street Fighter and you didn't stay up on how complicated all of the special attacks got, and then now the, didn't the newest ones simplify them more again? Right, yeah. So, yeah, it's very much a... A thing that has happened and it, i'm glad to hear that that there are a lot of girls who've like kept playing because i yeah i think it was like a cultural thing for a while like i had an n64 and a ps2 primarily because my dad was the type of person that wanted to play the games and used my sister and i as an excuse to buy it <laughs> <laughs> like, sure. yeah. i had an original nintendo i was born in 87 it came out in what 87 and dad got it for the kids i'm like i can't I can't hold my bottle, much less the controller. <laughs> that, you know, uh, and so uh, that's why I had them. But I like felt like I had to be quiet about gaming and stuff oh, when yeah. I was a kid. And then yeah. I was a poor college student, so I didn't have anything else until the Wii. Uh, and so, yeah, that reintroduced me. Like I, I feel bad. People talk about GameCube, and I'm like, I had to skip that because I had no money. Um, but it's yeah, for a while, I felt like I had to be quiet about it because girls didn't girls didn't game. Yeah, so. and and I know from my experience, like, again, very sim- par- partly money. Like, I never went past the PS2. I never went past the Nintendo DS because I didn't have money to get new systems. So, like, the Switch is the first new system I've had mm. since a Nintendo DS. Mm. And, like, even when I was young and playing the PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo DS, very... I, I grew up in a place where where the people around me, very few other girls were playing video games. You know, it was yeah. kind of the thing. We we girls were socialized to feel like, oh, that's the thing your brother does, mm. and you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's weird, right? Like, it, it, it seems to parallel the whole thing, like we talk about when you look at um, – scores on science and math yeah. that mm-hmm. girls are equal or even ahead of boys up until middle school. And then there's like this dramatic shift that occurs yeah. and you know, like it's obviously not an intellectual shift. It is a social shift that yeah. occurs. Yeah. And the same has been true historically, I think for video games. Again, I think that's changed. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think. No, that- I love to hear that you've got current female students who have never stopped playing video yes. games. Cause that is, I love hearing that change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, like, I think when I was talking about, like, crossing that threshold, I look at uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I think Animal Crossing on the Switch 2 is going to be one of the best-selling games on that system. Yeah. 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 Unless it's a complete disaster, you know, I think it's going to be another... (laughs) It'd still be one of the (laughs) best-selling games on the system. (laughs) But, I mean, I think they still sell, like, 30 million-plus copies. For sure. No, I think think that's a game you release in the first year of the Switch 2, and... Yeah, people people to, I mean. to get the console. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, and it becomes one of those games that everyone buys when they buy the system. They'll just pick that up, um, and they want to experience that. So, well, and I think the big thing that they also just realized is how well a game like Animal Crossing works on a mobile mm. console. I mean, obviously, right, yeah. I think obviously you had the first one on the GameCube, but I think after that they were all on the DS. I don't know if there was one on the Wii. Yeah, I there think they were have, all there DS. Might have been, but I know there was at least two or three. There was the DS, DS and then the ones. Wii U one. Was there a Wii U there one? There was okay. a Wii U one. Yeah, I think there was a Wii and a Wii U one, but then I think there were mobile version mobile ones as well. And I mean, really the the in Japan it started on the Nintendo 64. Sure. So mm. um, I, mean, I think I knew that. The GameCube version that we got is a port of the N64 mm-hmm. game essentially. Um but yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. Like, so talking about like the cozy mom thing, what I hear from friends often is my kid is watching a show that they want and I'm sitting mm-hmm. on the couch playing the Switch. Yeah. yeah. Like that's the time I can play the Switch. 
when my kid's watching something I don't want to watch. So <laughs> I can just sit here and play Switch. And because it's portable, yeah. right, I can just pick it up off the dock and sit there and play it. And I can still be in the room and still interacting with my kid if I need to. But, like, I can play this game. And also, as you noted, like, it's not The Last of Us. It's mm-hmm. not Final Fantasy Sixteen. I don't have to play four hours or six hours at a time. I can pick it up and play 30 minutes. And I, that also just means that it's a game that you probably feel comfortable playing around your kids as well. So uh, when, yeah. you, you know, right. the little one sort of pops up over your shoulder and wants to watch whatever you're playing, mm-hmm. you have no issue. You're not ripping like, somebody's exactly. head off. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's not <laughs> Mortal Kombat one on Switch. Well, that's probably That would scare them the for multiple reasons. <laughs> that game shouldn't be played in front of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> just, just ask OJ. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Ubisoft, uh, said they are quote disappointed by Assassin's Creed Nexus VR cells. <laughs> um, so this game actually got some pretty good reviews, but this was their Assassin's Creed VR game, which we all laughed at because are you going to be jumping off buildings in virtual reality? And like, <laughs> how's that going to work? Are you going to be assassinating your cat on accident? <laughs> Uh, um, but it got some good reviews, but apparently did not sell. This seems par for the course for VR software. Mm-hmm. It's just not selling right now. Uh, Maybe because it's VR. I didn't even know this was a thing, which I feel like I can't be the only one who is I, only I t- learning that there's an Assassin's Creed. I remember us VR joking game. about it now that you said that we joked about it. But until that minute, I was like, what? <laughs> there, there was a Assassin's Creed VR game? <laughs> I mean... This is the problem, right? Like, I have a VR headset at home, and I can't tell you how often stuff comes out, and I go, what? That's out? I I haven't even heard of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is a problem, right? Like, the software is not selling. I I get emails from Meta, Quest, all the time going, hey, we'll give you $5. Go buy a game. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, what is there to buy? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you really going to entice me with? And I, I sort of feel like a lot of people have those five or 10 pieces of VR software that they like to show off to other people or they like to play and they don't really need something new. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, what is that for you? Um, so um, was it Synth Riders? I like quite a bit, which is sort of like... Um, um, Beat Saber. Okay. Mm. It's a little like that. Um, so you're kind of like you have uh, balls that you're holding and you have to move them around space and everything. They apparently have released a version of that for uh, the Vision, the Apple Vision Pro, uh, which looks really insane because it, it like opens up a hole in the wall and you're like playing it through that. <laughs> um, but, you know, like something like that, like that, I like to show that game off to people because it's really simple and easy for people to understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets you sort of moving your whole body. Like you're playing it right. You're kind of like, you know, moving mm-hmm. your entire body around quite a bit. Um, but, you know, like even um, Job Simulator, okay. I think, is a really good piece of software to show off to other people. Once you've done it, you sure. don't really need to go back. But yeah as far as like actually putting you into a 3d environment and like getting that feeling of these things that aren't here, you get that sensation. They feel like they're physically there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, The example I always give is it it wasn't that game specifically, but uh, playing a VR game and you had a duck down behind a wall. And when I stood up, because I'm old, um, (laughs) I had to, I usually put my hand on something to like stand up Mm -hmm. and I tried to do that in VR and I like fell (laughs) forward (laughs) and luckily I didn't fall completely on my face and smash the headset into my face. I did catch myself, but you know, that sensation is really cool in VR. Mm -hmm. Like that. Oh, I am tricking my brain into believing that this stuff is Mm -hmm. actually there. Yeah. I, I've only have had one experience. That was when I went and, visited family um they live outside of philadelphia over the summer and um my uncle has has it and you know i think he mostly just plays like golf on on it right um (laughs) sure but uh yeah he he bought a game while i was there and it was yeah it's very disorienting like there's one where it's like you're standing on a moving platform and like i'm like this you know trying to balance myself Mm -hmm. or like 
taking a step back, but like there's no step back to take. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I'm interested if like, are, are you buying like a, the Skyrims or the Resident Evil VRs? Is that your deal or no? No, I haven't. Um, you know, those sort of like larger console games, I guess the one that I think I bought, but I haven't played it yet is, and I kind of held off for a long time is, um, Half-Life Alex, mm -hmm. And, um, I'm been meaning to play that because that game, um, now that it's much easier to stream from your computer to the headset. Cause uh -huh. that game's not on sure. the quest. Like it only is on steam. Mm. Um, but you know, like Tetris Connect it is on there, mm -hmm. um, or Tetris Effect Connect. That's yeah, Tetris Effect is the only thing I've played on VR, mm. Mm -hmm. and you know that's a really cool experience. And mm -hmm. uh, Res Infinite is a really cool. Ex Res Infinite is like a mind bending experience on there. Like everybody should play Res Infinite on there. Um, so there's a lot of cool software. It's just at some point you have enough. Sure. Like mm -hmm. to show off to somebody, right? If like yeah. somebody was coming over my house and they wanted to try VR, okay, well, I have plenty to show you. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't need a hundred different games <laughs> for that. <laughs> and then for myself, like, you know, do I want to play through the entirety of Skyrim in VR? And the answer is probably not. Yeah. yeah. You'd rather just play it with a normal sort of controller on your tv well honestly skyrim like all those games sure, i sure. bounce off of yeah. yeah so like the thought of trying to play through the entirety of a game that i bounce off of yeah. on a computer monitor in vr d doesn't appeal to me yeah mm -mm. yeah um but like there are things that i think are really neat mm -hmm. in vr and i think could be cool experiences i think that horizon game mm -hmm. you know i haven't played that but yeah. that looks really neat um but I'm also not going to spend six hundred dollars on a PlayStation VR two headset. Yeah, yeah, to play it. Um. So yeah, I mean, that's something we should do. We should do that. We talked about that at the end of last semester. Maybe that's something we can do this semester: is do like a, a VR day or VR night or something. I would be down for that because mm -hmm. I know the yeah, the only VR games I've I think I played. Beat, I played Beat Saber and I played Job Simulator when I was an undergrad because one of my friends boyfriends had a VR thing and then when they broke up and she got her own she like tried to show me a couple other games that just weren't my genre so I was like mm, but yeah that would be fun um let's see the FTC has complained that Microsoft said no layoffs when they were acquiring Activision uh before the deal went through and then they laid off 1900 people <laughs> Um, so Microsoft promised there would be no layoffs that this was going to be, um, they were going to keep basically Activision intact and then immediately laid off people. Mm, um, that's not a good luck, Microsoft. <laughs> so Microsoft claims that the deal changed between when they made that statement and the deal finally went through. This is their defense. Um, they put out a statement in response to the FTC saying, hey, re remember you made us make some changes. So, for example, they sewed off the uh, the streaming arm of Activision, mm -hmm. so um, which they sewed to Ubisoft, I think it was. Um, so, anyways, they said, hey, you know, like the deal has changed. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can't be held responsible because it's different. Again, we talked about this. Microsoft just passed $3 trillion in value. This seems like an awful sort of, hey, it's not our fault. Like, you know, like just trying to yeah. blame anyone and everyone for something that they really probably did not have to do. Yeah. yeah. It feels like the when a, when a little kid crosses their fingers behind their back and they're like, oh, ha, ha my fingers are crossed behind my back. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, um, I don't think that works in court. I don't think yeah. so. I don't <laughs> think so. I was just about to say, I was like, I mean, like, I can kind of understand, like, okay, well, we made this statement, but then that wasn't accepted. So I could understand, like, that statement was no longer, like, to be held valid. But then I was like, the example or, like, the joke that I thought was, like, you know, the Darth Vader, pray I don't alter the deal any further. <laughs> no. like, I guess when you're being compared to Darth Vader, it's probably, like, you're not in the right there. <laughs> Just maybe. 
It's not like Microsoft doesn't have a long history of being compared to the evil empire. <laughs> so um, maybe not the best for them. Um, some of those layoffs, though, at Activision were at the uh, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro developer Toys for Bob. Um, so Toys for Bob, I believe, originally worked on the Skylander series. And then when they did the um, remastered collections for Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, they did those. And then also, I believe, uh, Crash Bandicoot 4, mm -hmm. the like entirely new game. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, earlier, uh, Mario, I think you brought up originally that PlayStation doesn't have these sort of family-friendly games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They used to. Um, no. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro are, like, are the few that would be put into that category. Yeah, absolutely. And Xbox owns them, and they just got rid of the people who make those games. So if you're Xbox, this seems like sort of a crazy thing to do because you have the licenses to uh, two of the sort of like classic family franchises. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like, I mean, I know that obviously neither Crash Bandicoot nor Spyro were as big as Mario was, but... Growing up in that era when, you know, Crash Bandicoot was at its most popular, people knew who Crash Bandicoot yeah. was. Yeah. Um, like, that was they not... They made, like, 10 games. Yeah. That was, say, it, it that was wasn't, very much like, like... That's not, like, a niche character that nobody knows about. They, no, he had like, his own racing game, too, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, we all... It was, it was very much, like, always part of the same conversation with, like, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, mm -hmm. Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter. Like, mm -hmm. those were all fun games that you could get anybody to play. Ratchet and Clank. Like, Ratchet and yeah. Clank. Yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess that's that is probably still in there, and I know that that was a launch title. I think for the PS Five. It, right? it was very soon after okay. launch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like they they used to have this entire like sort of lineup of family friendly characters and games, mm -hmm. and they've almost completely abandoned those. Obviously, they don't have Crash and those anymore. Those are owned by uh, Microsoft. But this is also like, what does Microsoft have for families? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what are those franchises that are family-friendly franchises on the Xbox? And outside of like Forza, <laughs> a, a racing game, you know, like yeah. Halo, like, uh, you know, I would let kids play Halo. It's not extremely violent. It's not gory or anything. But, you know, it, it's, uh, I understand parents who might be more reticent uh, of a first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's like a weird business decision. Like I would think this is the one area you'd want to double down and say, Hey, we want to make some more of these family friendly games. Uh, -huh. uh, particularly if you are thinking about going multi-platform. So we talked about this last week. Uh, Xbox basically had to come out and address this. Um, uh -huh. uh, so they did put out a statement and said, Hey, we're going to be talking about that next week <laughs> so meaning oh. next week uh with you know valentine's day uh, middle of next week uh, microsoft said they are going to have some event next week in which they are going to address all these rumors of them going not abandoning the xbox platform it doesn't seem like but taking several of their software titles and making them multi-platform so mm -hmm. Uh, the ones rumored have been Hi-Fi Rush and uh, Sea of Thieves, um, uh, Starfield, um, the new Indiana Jones title. All of those have been rumored, and uh, obviously people have said, well, if they're doing those. They'll probably do additional titles as well. Yeah. Um, and this has provoked a lot of interest from multiple people about, like, why is Microsoft kind of uh, delaying this? Why didn't they just say, okay, let's address it this week because there's been a lot of blowback against them, a lot of Xbox fans saying, you're abandoning us. Why would we buy any more software on the Xbox platform because there's not going to be another Xbox? Um, and it seems weird to wait until I heard an interesting theory about why they might be waiting. Nintendo is supposedly planning uh, a... Uh, their own Nintendo Direct mm -hmm. sometime this month. A lot of people expect that to come next week. So mm -hmm. what if as part of that, this release of Hi-Fi Rush and um, Sea of Thieves and some of these other titles getting announced for the Switch has already been like tied They're up already. with Microsoft. 
And so Microsoft doesn't want to jump the gun ahead of Nintendo because mm. this was supposed to be all announced as part of that. Yeah. That makes sense. Because I was also wondering, I was like, why, why say we're going to talk about it next week and just like vague like that, like not even say, hey, we're doing a event on February 12th where we're going to talk about it. So that, that makes a lot of sense. There are also uh, theories that Microsoft may still not have decided entirely what they're doing, um, that there might still be people internally fighting this out. Mm -hmm. And like how much of third party are they going to go and what does this mean for the hardware and what are they going to announce about the hardware and that all of that's not 100% decided. Mm -hmm. I can believe there's still internal fighting. I can't believe that they don't have a lot of this already nailed down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there could yeah. be internal fighting, but I wouldn't expect them to say, we'll talk about it next week if there was still internal fighting that was going to mean anything. Yeah. You wouldn't think so, <laughs> but, uh, but, but stranger things have happened with game companies in the past. Um, so next week we should hear something about the future of Xbox. Um, I will say I do not expect Xbox to go away. I expect them to start selling some of their titles onto other systems mm -hmm. because games just cost way too much now. Like Sony has started doing this with PC, right? Yeah. Uh, it costs too much money even as well as they sell, it costs too much money to make a Spider-Man game and keep it on one system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that kind of pans out and everything. Um, Alicia, Paramount Plus released a full trailer for the new Knuckles TV series, which I was kind of surprised watching this trailer, how much this ties into the movies like Sonic is in it and uh, the the wife character. I can't remember yeah, her name. Maddie, I uh, think. Yeah, she's in it. And so, I, you know, uh, Tails is in it. Tails so I, is there. Knuckles gets to buddy cop up with the, with the second in command of the police department. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised because I just thought they might do this like a prequel with Knuckles and it would be a side story and not attached in any way. But it, it looks like they're really using this as a bridge between the second and third movies. Yeah. And I I am really excited. You know, I I don't have a Paramount Plus subscription. <laughs> I probably won't get one for this, even though Knuckles it has always been my second favorite Sonic character after Sonic himself. But... Excuse I, me, I will not stand for this big the cat duration. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think one of the things that really has just ever everyone losing their minds is, and I am, I have not heard this name pronounced since this character was on Sonic X in the early two thousands. So apologies if I mispronounce it. But to call's father, Pachekamak, Pachekamak. I think that's how you say it. No one's gonna. No one's gonna write in about that one. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty safe. Yeah, but <laughs> nobody listening to this podcast has any better <laughs> idea than you do. Excuse me. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say nobody cares. But, uh, I don't think anybody will. will write in at least. Well, uh, it, it, it is also the name of an actual town, place in Peru. So <laughs> it, it's not just a fantasy name. But yeah, the fact that it, we have him confirmed in there like for some reason he's working at the bowling alley and he has a name tag so we know it's him but i i don't know where they're going with that is it idris elba that's all i can <gasps> idris elba is still voicing okay. knuckles yeah. yes yeah he is doing the voice of I knuckles yeah it is that. it is still all did you not the... see sonic 2 uh no <laughs> <laughs> i watched the that's first gonna one. get you some more disdain than uh, not knowing listen, star wars i i have a feeling that there's gonna be people in here that are like oh she's just gonna talk about horror and that's fine uh no i haven't i saw the first one and i was like that is better than i thought it would be and then i left it alone. so it's, the second film is even better than the first really to the point where you're like this series should not actually be any good <laughs> <laughs> yeah it it is a lot of fun uh, I recommend, and I and I do think you know. While I'm not going to get a Paramount Plus subscription for the Knuckles TV I have show, one. oh, okay, cool. I can <laughs> mooch off yours, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to say I expect that within a within a year, like before Sonic Three comes out, they will release it on Blu-ray, mm -hmm. and I'll buy it then and watch it that way. Well, it isn't Sonic Three is that coming out next Christmas? It's coming out in December, and right. Johnny Gioli confirmed that 
Paramount bought the rights to use the song Live and Learn in the movie. December 2024? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, I mean, this series really is like tying directly into that. Is, you know, yeah, mm. it, it is we are getting bridging a, the gap. A lot of sonic content this year. Mm. So, you know, we... We've we've basically accepted that it's the year of Shadow the Hedgehog, but I also love that Knuckles is getting some love. And that he had his cowboy hat. That just makes me happy. <laughs> I just feel like the last thing we need is more multiverses, more cinematic universes. We don't need any more. Well, this isn't a multiverse. It's just a cinematic universe. Right, that's, yeah. yeah, that's and more it, what I meant. And I think that the nice thing about this... This is the I Kingdom have... Hearts problem. <laughs> it's, you no, better have I... 14 different streaming services to watch all of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the, th- the thing I, I don't mind about this is that That's the they Pokemon have... issue. I, oh, don't get me started. But the, they have confirmed that this is just a six-episode miniseries, so like it's not going to be continuing on beyond that. It's just like a nice little six episodes <laughs> diving. Do you miss Sonic? Can you not wait until Christmas? <laughs> but I think this is the real question that we need answered. This is on Paramount, the same streaming platform that gave us the Halo series. So are we going to see Knuckles' butt? I <laughs> mean, he only wears gloves. Also true. <laughs> So like we don't need the Paramount show. And shoes. For that. He wears shoes. He wears shoes. Yeah, <laughs> we, but like we saw John Halo's butt. So do we see? <laughs> we've seen Knuckles' butt before. <laughs> Paramount is not giving us something new with that. <laughs> you heard it here first, furries. <laughs> this is going to be like wonderful for you. Uh, <laughs> Like, I feel like Paramount has become the weird, like, softcore porn channel for video gamers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is not why I have it, by the way. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. RuPaul was on it, and I just kept it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh-huh. Likely uh-huh. story. <laughs> so is this just supposed to be, like, a goofy thing? or is I think so. I, I mean, hope, they like, have, that's like, that's what a, I would hope it would they be. They have, like, I mean, the... The comparison in my brain now is like Jesse and James from Team Rocket. So like they have a villain pair and but they're leaning into the goofiness of it. Like when they show up, Knuckles is like, you can't steal my power. And the guy does the, do I look like I need your power? (laughs) And the girl is like, what are you talking about? Of course we do. That's literally why we're here. So they're they're definitely having fun with it. I I personally. I, I don't expect this to happen but like this would be a moment for me like having sanic in the fr- the sanic drawing in the first movie if we get an unlike sonic i don't chuckle reference that that will just be the icing on the cake <laughs> i mean it's very much in the tone of the two movies mm-hmm. yeah so if you saw the movies this is very much following that exact tone i guess i mean is this is there going to be like actual plot or is this just going to be like here's I- six episodes of some episodic goofy stuff that's no i think doing here's knuckles buds i think there is actual plot okay it's going to be like what is it the third transformers movie where it begins on the model like walking up the stairs like just the camera on her butt oh god like if you've seen that film, yeah i know exactly what moment you're talking it's like about. some victoria's secret model and she's like walking up the stairs but like they shot that film in like imax 3d yeah so i did not see it that way but like uh-huh. you have to think <laughs> a likely story. <laughs> Do you really think I saw any Transformers movie in IMAX? Oh, <laughs> I have <man>. some self-respect. <laughs> now, if they re-release the animated film from 1987, I will go see Look, that. They might. It is. They might. It is Transformers 40th anniversary this year. They are talking about doing a re-release. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> But I, I just assume that's what we're going to get with Knuckles in this, like slow motion <laughs> Knuckles walking up the steps and everything. Um, yeah, no, I mean it, it. seems like it's a real story. It's not like um, it's not like mini episodes. Okay. Or yeah, it's not filler. Goofy like that. It's it's not filler. It's not the anime beach episode. I no. wish it were. That's just give me six <laughs> beach episodes and that's fine. <laughs> oh, so you, you want to see Knuckles on the beach, huh? That's fine. <laughs> oh my God, what is this turn? Is it knuckles in a speedo is 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's more clothes than knuckles. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's lowering the bar. Sorry, I was about to Sorry say, knuckles and a thong. I was gonna say, on the beach, he's going to take off his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Scan, that's scandalous. <laughs> you can't get sand in those shoes. How would he run in them? Somebody's going to get knuckles feet pics. Oh, no, no. <laughs> now you took it too far. It was, it was just off-putting. <laughs> Um, all right. We talked about this last week uh, with the WWE and their problems. We talked about that Brock Lesnar's card um, in the SuperCard mobile game had been removed. He has now been removed from the cover of WWE 2K24. Um, he was originally on the cover of that game. He's been removed from it. Um, Good. One would assume he might also have been removed from the game itself. Um, I don't know that that's been confirmed 100% yet. But also that Muhammad Ali will appear in the game, which... <laughs> in WWE? Yeah, which seems weird. I feel like Muhammad Ali is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Like, I think he's he's had instances and stuff, like, mm-hmm. appearances before. I, I, I think he has, but I don't remember I him far. ever lots, wrestling yeah, lots of random folks have i mean i'm pretty sure snoop wrestled at some point <laughs> like, yeah, I, mean, I think why well, yeah i think snoop dogg is in the wwe uh-huh. hall of fame i know donald trump is in the wwe uh-huh. hall of fame cindy yeah. lopper yes. yeah 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 drew carey honestly it's like straight men drag that's the reason i like <laughs> wrestling uh my partner will go on and on and on about this but yeah it's 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 drag for the straights no i, I mean it. i i grew up watching it we I, we'll still watch it with Friends will watch whatever the uh-huh. sort of monthly pay per view is. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and for that reason, I, I did end up reading that court case. And yeah, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a good thing that uh, Lesnar is being removed. There's, there's, it, it's one of those things that that's why I felt like I, I should read this as somebody who is a fan and is still does on occasion still consume this. Like, I feel like, yeah, I should inform myself as to what all that is, is yeah. going on. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really terrible. That's what I found out, and, like, apparently Triple H and The Rock are going to be the ones that are kind of taking over in that McMahon role to some degree. Triple H has been basically in charge for the yeah. last however many isn't, years. Isn't he married to McMahon's daughter? Yes. Ah, that's why. I yeah, will say so I've, never, I've never liked wrestling. I've never been a fan of it, but I really appreciated... It was probably over a year ago now when we were talking about some other wrestling game, Justin, and you, Justin, you brought up how... You know, people people talk about how wrestling is all fake, mm-hmm. and you were like, you know, no, it's choreographed. Yes, yes. And I was yeah. like, that was a good perspective shift for me. Yeah, I, it's it's still not my thing. I still don't enjoy it, but it makes me respect it a little more than. There's a video. I'll send you a video I th- mm-hmm. that I think you would actually really appreciate the like way that this person talks about it. It would. If that's a perspective you appreciate it, I'll send this it to It was, you. like, when I was in, I want to say fifth or sixth grade, this was, like, wrestling was a um, special topic, like, for me, and the neurodivergent thing. And so, yeah, I remember watching videos of them, like, they actually would cut themselves, but they knew, like, where to cut themselves and, like, where they would hide the thing to do it. Like, yeah. Right. It's, mm-hmm. It is, that's why I was, like, drag is such a good metaphor for it, because it is a performance of this sort of hyper hyper gendered position um because even the women's wrestling to a certain extent does this even though it's gotten more physical and less like aesthetic in in years it's yeah it's it's based if you think about it as a performance i think you would really learn to yeah appreciate it it's not the ladies of glow anymore oh man but i man I mm, I loved that <laughs> the, so much. The original Ladies of Glow, yes. or like the uh, the TV series. I the TV series was okay, but I was the little kid that was obsessed with Glow when I was a kid. Kid, and oh, it was so it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I mean it it is. I mean it's very much like I think that's important because. I think people undersell like the physicalness of what these guys are doing. Mm -hmm. Like if I take you and throw you off the top, you know, rope of a wrestling ring, that hurts. Mm -hmm. That's not fake. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, you can say, well, there's springs and everything built into it still hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, take somebody and 
throw them onto a mattress Mm -hmm. and it's still going to hurt if they're doing this multiple times. Mm -hmm. And like, I think what a lot of people don't realize is these guys are on the road, like constantly, like we see them on Monday nights and Thursday nights or whenever, but like they're on the road wrestling almost every night. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's my thing. Like is a respect towards, okay, well, this can be silly and everything, but like these people are actually putting their bodies through a lot Mm -hmm. and it's unfair to call it fake, call it what it is. It's choreographed. It's, you know, arranged or whatever term you want to use. Um, but they're actually doing quite a, something quite amazing to do this every night. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably they're closer to circus performers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say that. Than anything like Cirque du Soleil, something like that, where it takes, I, I got to imagine for those people, like a physical toll on their bodies mm-hmm. yeah. doing that every night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and in this video, it's called wrestling isn't wrestling or something like that. And in, in it, the line that stuck with me the most is, you know, he's like, people always want to try and compare it to something like MMA. It is not like MMA. WWE is closer to game of Thrones than it is MMA. Mm-hmm. And in mm-hmm. that sense, it might be the most real TV show that, that there is. <laughs> But uh, I think like that's a perspective that like people who don't watch it especially don't take. They they're expecting this to be closer to actual combat sports. Like no, this is a this is a television program. Right. Yeah. So I actually did a talk on this one time mm-hmm. about wrestling and about wrestling's attempt at this term authenticity mm-hmm. and what do we mean by authenticity and is wrestling actually more authentic? Uh, than lots of entertainment that we consume, um, you know, but like everybody kind of under, like kind of cuts it off and it's like, oh, it's all fake and staged. And it's like, yeah, but like wrestling is the only show that you're watching and you never know quite what's real and what's not real. So like the Vince McMahon character, the Mr. McMahon character that he created and got popularized in the late nineties and into the two thousands that character, the crudeness, the mm-hmm. like malevolence of that character, come to find out is actually much closer to who Vince McMahon really was. Yep. Mm-hmm. And in fact, he's actually much worse mm-hmm. than that character. So like at what point are you playing a character and what point are you like a real person on screen? And I find that dynamic really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's been, I, I really appreciate like, getting my horizons broadened by this because most of my exposure to WWE has been, you know, the it's all fixed and it's all fake perspective and, you know, the sexism and abuse and stuff like that that happens. Mm-hmm. So so I've, I've always been an outsider looking at it going, how could anyone mm-hmm. enjoy this? And then, like, getting to hear y'all talk about how it is circus performers and how it is... I was this about really to say, interesting performance work. I was about to say, as a performance scholar, think about like calling wrestling fake is like someone watching you in a show and being like, eh, this doesn't matter. It's fake. Yeah. Because it, it, it ends up becoming that performance, right? Yeah. That they, I mean, obviously it's more physical <laughs> than any show I personally have ever done. Um, but it's, it, it, it becomes that, right? These big characters. And there's actually a show that's about to come out that is uh, two of them are two folks who is a married couple yeah. in the wrestling that uh, I'm kind of, <laughs> I haven't been in wrestling a long time, but like my partner being interested in it has been sucking me back into it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm probably going to end up watching the show because it's like, are they really like their characters? Yeah. Or is this the Miz show? It's the uh, no, fart. It's a, what is it's her a name? Different couple, Bianca um, Belair. Bianca Belair. And, that's oh, what it is. Okay. And I never remember her husband's name because she comes out with. The, she's the one that I watch really. So she's much bigger in WWE yes. than he is at this point. Yes, I would say like um, the movie Wrestling with My Family. Oh, it's such a good movie. Yeah. Um, is a really good sort of explanation of what's good about wrestling. Mm. And I would say the first season of Glow. Oh, yeah. um, which Glow is on Netflix. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah. yes. So mm-hmm. the first season of that, it kind of goes off the rails <laughs> as it progresses mm-hmm. to me. Yes. like, um, But that first season, when you get to the final episode, really captures what's mm-hmm. why adults get into wrestling yes. and stay into wrestling from being little kids and stuff. And 
I'm not nearly as much of a fan as I used to be. Um, but like, I still think there's something really cool about it. Mm-hmm. And you know, when WrestleMania comes around every year, especially now, cause you just get the subscription. Um, I watch that just about every year. Mm-hmm. In fact, it used to be when playing for pets, when I was organizing playing for pets, WrestleMania would always be around the same time. So there's all these pictures that pop up on my like timeline every year of me watching uh, WrestleMania while like putting together equipment or something. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I I went the year that it was in Santa Clara with my uncle, and it's like one of the most fun live events I've ever uh, been to. Yeah, I get into it. Yeah. So that was a weird, like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I Brock, didn't expect us to talk about wrestling that much. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, probably terrible. Vince McMahon, definitely terrible, you know, in terms of wrestling the relation to whole? this story. Oh. Rel- yeah, wrestling as a whole is probably fine still. <laughs> I mean, tune in for our new show, the Saluki WrestleCast. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> so let me know when it's recording. I'm, I'm just Too bad we don't have all the footage of OJ and Ryan in the parking I, lot. I mean, I, I really think like we might have to do a, a spinoff. We'll just do like an episode every now and then. We'll have our own like wrestling podcast. N- nobody tell Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> or get Sandy in here and explain to her. <laughs> like, I don't Sandy. know. She may be a big wrestling yeah, fan. So I, I think I think we've got the ignorant one here uh, for that. <laughs> everything I learned about Sandy surprises me. So honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like uh, I feel like either Craig or Johnny One would be a big wrestling fan. Yeah, again for the drag element of it, it's campy. Like once you start, I feel to like in Johnny it. is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would I would not be shocked if one of them yeah. was a big wrestling fan. <laughs> I'll say I've never asked either of them, but I feel like it would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, last thing here, real quick. Um, Evo announced their 2024 lineup. So Evo is the big fighting game tournament. Um, it's the biggest of the year every year, um, and the lineup is not too surprising. Street Fighter Six, the just released Tekken Eight, Mortal Kombat One. One not assumes, on Switch. yeah, one assumes <laughs> not the Switch version. They should have an entire event dedicated <laughs> to the Switch. <laughs> uh, Guilty Gear Strive, King of Fighters Fifteen. Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. <sighs> this game. <laughs> Under Night in Birth 2, Sis Celeste. Uh-huh. What? Yep. That is a title. And that sure is a title. <laughs> Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. Um, so the thing that I think is really kind of neat about this, I don't know if that if Guilty Gear or King of Fighters, when those newest versions came out, uh, but at least Street Fighter Six, Tekken Eight, and Mortal Kombat One—all three of those have come out in less than the last year. Strive yeah. is at least one or two, uh, at least more than a year old, okay. two years old maybe. I, I lose track of the Guilty yeah. Gear series. Um, fighting games are in a really healthy place that I feel like they haven't been in years. That Tekken Tekken Eight has been getting like great reviews. Um, I feel like people are really back into fighting games and. That's kind of cool to see that that was a genre that felt like it was on its last legs for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. And to see it like kind of back and with big, you know, uh, the biggest franchises all putting out new games. It's kind of exciting. It felt like it felt like it had fallen into like this is a niche category where it has a devoted fan base, but like your everyday sort of gamer is probably not going to be playing them outside of Smash. But whether yeah. you want to call Smash a fighting game or a party game i think is one that we've already game. talked about yeah <laughs> i was in a tournament <laughs> i made it to the semifinals i thought i did a good job let's, let's go <laughs> that's better than i would probably do <laughs> um yeah so one notable exception here is obviously there is no uh smash and that's because nintendo has basically banned it from tournaments yeah wow. um which nintendo's been on this is more Nintendo's just insanity. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Like, Nintendo should be encouraging this. That is healthy for that game. It's yeah. healthy for the community. Yeah, that that's a Nintendo power trip. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo Power yeah, the yeah, Magazine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I once won a Nintendo power trip. <laughs> To the premiere of the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was completely unintentional. <laughs> uh, well, those are the best puns always. Um, but anyway, so neat to see that 
uh, genre back alive and healthy. Um, hopefully they continue to build off of that and don't fall into the same old ruts that the fighting games have at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, that does it for all the news. So that leaves us with our big question. And ladies and gentlemen, it is, I don't know if we can say the word. It is the week of the big game. The football fandom is having its big annual event this weekend. <laughs> we are, uh, I love all the, um, all the advertisements that say it's the big game because they can't okay. legally say Super Bowl uh, without paying the NFL for the rights. It's disrespectful because the big game is the Cal Stanford game. That's, what it's, that's the name of that game. And they've been doing that for like 112 years now. Um, but the Super Bowl is this weekend. Um, or what do you think? Are you, are you going to watch it? That's Even just de- for the commercials? I was say I usually watch for the commercials and for the halftime show. Mm-hmm. It's honestly going to depend on where, on where I'm at with my writing. If I'm going to go, there's the Newman Center always does a Super Bowl party, and I usually go to that to just like hang mm-hmm. out with people. But if I haven't written enough, I can't sure. go. <laughs> we understand your predicament. <laughs> I used to use the commercials a lot when I taught undergrad classes and culture and stuff like that. So I would always pull in uh, the commercials for stuff like that. But right. uh, now that I don't have to do, <laughs> <laughs> um, who's the halftime show? Usher. Uh, sure. Oh no, <laughs> Usher. Oh no. Uh, uh, oh man. Yeah. There's a big game around the Usher concert uh, yeah, this weekend. Yeah, I was about to say, like, 16-year-old me is like, why are you not going to watch it? Because, Christina, <laughs> we would like to nap. <laughs> um, you can nap during the first half, wake up for the Usher concert, and then take a nap in the second half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you can watch the first, you can watch the concert and then nap after because you'll be up singing along and dancing along for Usher and yeah. then nap after that. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen. How about you, Mario? Will you watch? Yes, very much so. As a 49ers fan, I mean, obviously, but yes, definitely I will be watching it. All right. Um, I will also be watching. So we thought it would be a good time, you know, to obviously talk about this. So obviously the thing everyone wants to know is if you had to make a Taylor Swift game, (laughs) what kind of game would it be? Um, obviously she is the big draw to the game this weekend. We might get a whole 20 seconds of her on screen <gasps> during the 12 hours of coverage I that will love, surround the Super Bowl. I just love, you You just know everyone who whines about the network showing her in the in the crowd. Those same people who are whining, would, if she wasn't there, would be like, why isn't she supporting her boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> it's she, like, she, she can't win. <laughs> no. Um. So, what kind of Taylor Swift game would you like? Christina, why don't we start with you? Yeah, because I, I have thoughts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, like, this is, I'm not a Swifty, and I'll just say that. Um, but I have enjoyed a lot of this discourse around her, like, in the games and stuff. And so, something like Taylor Saves America, but, like, all it is is her trying to, like, disrupt patriarchal events. <laughs> so like trying so, to so get... So you want the Miss Americana documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like her trying to get more airtime on, on football shows and basically anything that's like hyper-masculine. How, how can I weave Taylor? How can I hide her and then make her take all the attention? So <laughs> is it a hidden object game where you're like at an MMA fight and you have to f- search the crowd to yes. find Taylor Swift? Okay, instead yeah, of, yeah. It's like, instead of where in the world is Carmen Sandiego, yeah. where in the world is Taylor Swift? It or would, where's Waldo? It would or fit Waldo? in that observation duty stuff. It's like the anomalies are all Taylor Swift <laughs> focused. What are the hyper-masculine events? So the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MMA fights. MMA fights. WrestleMania. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll say wrestling. Yeah, for sure. uh, yeah, those those kinds of things. Anything where like a most, gun show. Yeah, where most of the participants would grunt at me if I walk in with purple hair. Like that's <laughs> anything that 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 rings that bell. Those are going to be like the different levels. A Trump rally. Yes. Is that <gasps> the final level? Oh yeah, a Trump rally would be great because that's going to be loud and I'm not. Well, I can't get too far into politics, but like uh, there's going to be a lot going on that will take your <laughs> eye away from Miss Taylor, and there's probably honestly going to be a lot of white blonde women there. So uh, it would be difficult. Difficult to oh, that's out. true. That's that would be point. the Where's Waldo level. Yep, yep. That's the final boss. Yeah. Yep. 
<laughs> and then Taylor Saves America. That's why it's that title. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Alicia, what's your Taylor Swift game? You're the only real Swifty here. I am a big Swifty. I, I don't know, Mario. Maybe you are. I'm not a Swifty. She actually was in my top five of Spotify. There are a Aww. number of songs I liked off of her most recent album, but oh. I don't really seek out her new music. Oh, see, okay. I'm, I'm that person who I have all of her albums from the original runs and I still rebuy Taylor's version, mm. but I, good I, fan, good fan. Yeah. I love her. I think she, she's just one of my favorite humans. Um, but that said, <laughs> I had no idea what kind of game I would make for her. So my, my answer is boring. I was just like, I, and it's funny cause we talked about this before the show, but I had this idea before we talked about it. So I didn't just steal the idea, <laughs> but okay. like I would, I would love to do have like a, a Taylor Swift version of rock band where you can, you know, play all the instruments and sing along and just cry for 10 minutes through the all too well, 10 minute version <laughs> that, that would probably be it for me. Is there going like, to be a, like a tear controller that like you have to clip on? Only, <laughs> only if they land on your guitar and you get teardrops on my guitar. That's the bonus stage. <laughs> <laughs> you unlock by, if you cry enough it's, onto it's your got controller. A tear, teardrop sensor. On yeah. <laughs> And it, it knows it like is gonna like measure the, like the salinity and, and it's like like you can't just put regular like tap water on here. Oh, I just got like real technical. <laughs> it even has like te- like 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 hardware capabilities. Here. Yes. But yeah, that that's my Taylor Swift game because I think that would that would be again that family friendly aspect that we're all missing of like who does it, who who wouldn't want to play that? You can get a three year old hitting the buttons on the. Guitar Hero guitar. Not well, but you can get them doing it. Pinch them so they're the one that cries on the guitar. <laughs> hey, your cat died. I'm just kidding. You got us to the bonus level. Oh, no. <laughs> Mittens is fine. Um, all right. Uh, Mario, how about you? So I was, I was going to take this a little bit more in a critical manner and it actually was going to be more of a where in the world is taylor (gasps) swift and it would be an edutainment game where you can learn about those locations but also learn about her like incredibly problematic carbon footprint yes yes like how (laughs) how many trees had to die for her to fly to this location she's got like 90 semi trucks like moving like her her like concert tour She's got like two private jets. Apparently, she's selling one of them. Oh, but good for her. But uh, yeah, I I know. Yeah, good the for people her for that, selling one of her private jets. <laughs> but like the people who measure that say that like she was yeah like by far the biggest like celebrity pr- polluter with all the traveling Oof, and that. stuff. Which like again, I I think she's a, a perfectly fine artist. Um, yeah. Uh, there are a number of her songs that I do like. Uh, I think you know she seems like a decent person. Mm-hmm. Um, but she should also probably be held accountable for, for sure. some of those actions as Absolutely. well. Um, all right. So I had two answers. <laughs> um, one, which I think is actually a really good idea. One that I think is just fun. <laughs> um, so the fun one is, um, I don't know if any of you remember this game, Revolution X in the arcade. Mm-hmm. It was a gun game. This is the... Aerosmith game? Okay. Yes. I thought we've talked about and this. And it is um, you are shooting CDs at <laughs> enemies on screen to the music of Aerosmith. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and so I'm thinking I want an arcade Reputation X. An arcade shooter where you are yeah, okay, fine. Reputation X. <laughs> would not have known that (laughs) Um, (laughs) where you are shooting people to the music of Taylor Swift. And you get that cue up bad blood and then like crack your neck and shoot (laughs) Shoot CDs at people. I can see that. (laughs) I don't know if it has to be like MP3 files now. Like maybe CDs are are too outdated. Or just like Spotify executives or something like that. Shoot it like vibes. (laughs) Like shoot just vibes. (laughs) It could be vinyl, I suppose. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are, it doesn't like everybody at their concerts. Well, it's like the friendship bracelets. It's oh, like yeah. the Taylor thing. Uh, yeah. Well, you can shoot friendship bracelets at them as well. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. You've I got remember. like the enemy people that you shoot the vinyls at, and then you've got 
the allies that you shoot the friendship <gasps> bracelets with. There you go. You got Market. two different ammo cartridges. There we go. We just need to find a developer. <clears throat> yeah. So Revolution X is a great game, by the way. It's terrible, but it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever see a copy of it out in the wild somewhere, stop and put a quarter in. Play that game. It's completely worth your time. Um, we used to play that a lot in college. Our college, uh, the student center had one, oh, like cool. in oh, nice. the bottom floor, and so we'd go and play quite a bit of that. That's game. such a cool idea for a student center to have like a like a little arcade. We had something. a bowling alley, yeah. and pool tables, and a little tiny arcade. It was real yeah. small. It was mm-hmm. maybe yeah. ten machines. Boise or something. State had a bowling alley and pool table, but like I don't know, an arcade. That's they, they had consoles. Did they? Yeah, oh, then you okay. had, but. Uh, yeah. The, the only th- place I knew is like Space Bar. Is oh, that, okay. they, uh, that's yeah. the only place yeah. I played. It wasn't like arcade machines. It was like consoles oh, that they had gotcha. games for. Oh, yeah. that's so nice. Um, but the idea that I think is actually like uh, a, a genuinely good one, and I want to see them make this, uh, a Katamari game. So Katatete Mari <laughs> is the title for it. <laughs> and you are um, the, the, uh, the queen of all media um because um she is so you push around a ball and you are rolling up uh awards and like uh platinum albums and also uh (laughs) ex-boyfriends to write songs about and you just roll around different levels collecting all of this stuff Uh. and when you get to the end of it like, you know, you get rewarded with one of our songs. I was going to say, and rather than it being like a star that you put into the sky, it just stimulates the, lo- the local economy. <laughs> yes. I, I think I think also if you do this, though, it needs to be her cats because she is a crazy cat lady. Oh, yeah. So you need, you need to like really lean into that and have it be her cats rolling this around. So in other words, there's a lot of potential here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, I just want another Katamari game. Ah, fair. fair and sure. um, if they make another Katamari game and it has to be Taylor Swift, then I'm fine with that. And if I get to roll up um, John Mayer in a <laughs> ball, like all the better. <laughs> I know she stated other guys. That's I'll the, only say, the, qu- the question is, do we do we confirm like Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. I, I don't know. I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> Christina knows. <laughs> yeah. So that does it for our ideas for, you know, the big game. Like, how, <laughs> like the big game is obviously whatever game that Taylor Swift is going to slap her brand onto. Um, so we gave you some ideas. Taylor, you know, give us just a tiny little bit of the royalties from that. <laughs> we'll be a fine. Little bit. We will accept 1% even. Enough to sustain the podcast, maybe a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Enough to sustain the podcast and its and our lives, so we can sustain the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I think if she gives us one uh, percent of the royalties from that game, we could do we could sustain this entire department off of that. Yeah. We could finally get the new building <laughs> <laughs> that they've been promising us for fifteen years. Well, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> that, that new building's okay. I can't I can't say anything publicly. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming eventually. I, I I will be surprised if it happens before I graduate. <laughs> um, but that does it for this week's episode. Uh, thank you, Alicia, Christina, and Mario. Thank you for everyone listening. Um, all of our Game of the Year stuff and back episodes are on our website at salukigames.com, so go check that out. Um, in the meantime, like give us a, uh, a good rating on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts because that really does help other people find the podcast. So we always appreciate that. Until next week, have a great week. Play something cool. There's all sorts of new games like Project 13 and, uh, and Sheepy and Part-Time UFO that you can go check out right now. So go check those out, and we will talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs>